started work on Assassin's Creed 3 in January of 2010, so we knew we had three years, uh, and we knew we had the opportunity to have a brand new character, brand new historical backdrop, brand new setting, and we wanted to introduce a, a brand new set of player fantasies as well, so we really wanted a huge leap, uh, uh, you know, as much as we could squeeze out of it. We wanted you uh, to have a home base as the player, somewhere you live, and then throughout the game there'll be people you run across who need assistance, and if you help them, uh, they will build their own properties near yours. So you will eventually have this sort of thriving village around your homestead. Uh, each of those people can be contracted by you to either create resources, like get you lumber or whatever, uh, uh, or to turn that lumber into things like wooden chairs, which you can then send in a convoy to markets in Boston and New York, as you discover them, to make money, uh, sometimes to make uh, you know decorative items for your, for your house, sometimes to uh, replenish your gear, um, uh, uh, all kinds of other fun stuff. So there are recipes in the game uh, which you can use once you've gathered resources either by hunting or by discovering them in chests or, or looting them from people that you can turn into gear. So uh, my favorite one is that uh, uh, if you complete some of the side quests you will eventually be given the, the recipes to Ben Franklin's inventions which unfortunately are not gear that you can use the, to combat enemies. Uh, they're amazing things like the glass harmonica uh, and uh, uh, you know that you can put in your house. We wanted to get them in somehow but yeah they're not, they're not as useful in combat. Combat as, as some of Leo's. Uh, it's still a story about killing Templars and uncovering this, this global conspiracy uh, that's taking place during the American Revolution. So uh, uh, yes, there are redcoats that if you start killing people near them will attack you. They sort of operate like police. But that's also true of the bluecoats. So you're in an area where they're, you know, either a, a, an area's been liberated, you know, later in the game, or uh, uh, they're just there, like the army is there. If you start killing their buddies, they will also attack you. So um, in, in a weird way, they're, they're, they're each section of the game has its own armed force uh, uh, that's occupying that territory and none of them like random assassinations. So uh, you sort of go both ways in the story and in just the toy gameplay as well. It's a monster game. I think sometimes you, you're working on everything in isolation and you don't realize just how big it is until you stand it up and put it back to back. Uh, I think your average gamer, if they want to complete all the side activities, you know, gather everything uh, as well as the main storyline, we're talking 35, 40 hours. There's a heap of different weapons in there. There's, there's adjustments to the hidden blades, there's the tomahawk, there's the bow, there's the rope dart, uh, there's a war club which you can buy, which has is, is, is got some uh, uh, amazing, spectacular animations. Uh, I think it's personal taste. A lot of, you know, AC hardcore fans, I think, really like the hidden blades. It's, a, it's such a signature uh, a piece of gear for the franchise, so I'm sure a lot of people will prioritize those. Uh, the Tomahawk, um, so far online, people seem to like it, so I'm, I'm really curious about uh, looking at the stats once the game is out there. Uh, I like the running assassinations, I like the ability to run up to someone with your Tomahawk and essentially, you know, kill them and run through them uh, to the next target. Uh, uh, I love the animals. I love the fact that we got some magic moments in for animals in the world uh, where you can watch a, a bear, you know, fishing if you, if, you, if you can sneak up on them enough. I love the tree running, the fact that for once in a game a forest is not just a collection of assets that you avoid, it's a, it's a play space. Um, and I love the fact that we have a, a Native American hero in the game. There's a couple of naval missions to introduce why you would have a boat, uh, how it fits into the narrative that you have to do, but then really the core of the naval experience is a, is a secondary thread uh, focusing on a particular Templar, so you can engage with that if you want. And then there's a bunch of sort of toy missions where you know, we call them privateer contracts where you can get out there just to make some money. So, you know, we have this big fictional story, we know that's the driving force for a lot of players. So how does multiplayer work in that, you know, in that, in that context? So we talked about, uh, uh, you know, setting it within the Abstergo part of the fiction. So our, our, our company that's, you know, supposedly in the present behind all of these conspiracies, you know, why would they be running a simulation of these historical periods? So we try to focus on that and, and really ground the multiplayer in the, in the whole narrative experience. Uh, we also talked a lot about, you know, sort of what new modes we would work on, how we would clarify it, how we would polish it. So we have cool new modes like Wolfpack, um, which I think people are going to really like. Uh, and obviously the whole thing is now uh, of the beautiful flavor of the American Revolution. I think I'm most proud in Assassin's Creed 3, uh, you know, of, 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 the, of just the sheer scope of the game. It was a hugely ambitious game and I'm, I'm just so proud of the team that we managed to get it done. But I'm no threat! It's not a party! Uh, If I had to choose between the Orient, uh, Victorian London, or modern New York, if those were the only three options on the table, I think I'd take Victorian London.